morning. So we're back uh, here in Springfield, Oregon, um, and it's time to put on the lap siding. Lap siding goes uh, bottom piece, top piece goes over, over and over. Obviously it creates that shingling effect where if water to, were to hit the home, it goes nowhere but out uh, versus in. Um, that's the whole point. Anyway, um, the siding we're putting on is probably a half by eight uh, cedar bevel. And I will show you a picture of that in a little bit. Anyway, the bottom of it is thicker than the top. Um, so one piece goes on, it leans in a little bit at the top, the next piece leans in a little bit, blah, 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 blah. So a couple things I'd like to point out, um, and just stuff that I have figured out over time, uh, you know, eight inch tall siding means I'm gonna have a reveal somewhere in the, I don't know, six and a half, seven, six inch range. What that means is the amount of siding that I actually see and that is not covered by the next piece is the reveal. Um, this is my chance to make life really easy or uh, not. Um, you know, I don't expect everybody to put this much time and thought into it. Sometimes you're better off just saying, okay, we're gonna uh, have a seven inch reveal and just go and let happen whatever is gonna happen. But, you know, this is a very simple project and I thought I would uh, tell you what goes through my mind when I think about what to do or what kind of reveal to initiate or start. You know, once you start something, you're committed. I mean, it's done, right? Um, now, I have the uh, advantage of having, you know, there's another building behind us that we did months ago, and that is what we're going to do. Um, and this is what I figured out before. I've got basically an eight foot tall wall here, and I actually measured it, you know, from this flat soffit down to the bottom of the sheeting here. And I know I want to hang past the bottom of the plywood, half inch, three eighths, something. Enough where the, if the water comes down the wall, it will not get back up into the plywood underneath there. So I took that dimension and I, I'm not gonna do it now, but then I fussed around with it and I made it to where it would work out equally. It's, it's about a hundred inches, okay? And I don't remember what, what I had to do, but I worked around that six inch range and I, you know, you take that 100 inches, divide it by, you start out by dividing it by 6 inches. And you either come up with, for example, you know, 17 or 18, you know, courses is either a little above 6 or a little below 6. Anyway, I picked whatever I picked. Um, and I wanted this top piece bumping into the soffit to be a, the same reveal as everything else. I didn't want to have to rip a, a funky little piece at the top. So every reveal you look at all the way up the wall is the same. And that's what I, that's one thing I shot for. Another thing I was shooting for is to make sure that I, you know, there, this is, I go and mark the tops of where I'm gonna put these pieces. When the piece comes across here, I don't wanna have to cut two pieces to go around these windows. Let's take a look at this. But this is what I'm talking about. I have to cut some out of this bottom piece you know, two inches or so to go around this window trim, then the next piece up is square and doesn't get cut. This is a perfect example of what you try not to do. It's a perfect example, because I had to cut the bottom piece to go around the trim, and I had to cut the top piece. That's mm -hmm. twice the work. But there's only two of those. It was the only time that happened uh, in my own defense. Uh, this siding is real consistent. What I mean by that is the thickness of it, I can count on it being the same from piece to piece. You know, hardy plank or hardy uh, backer, you know, lap siding, it's always the same. Uh, this stuff, always the same. Some natural, you know, uh, cedar bevel may not be as consistent. The other question you come up with, you know, when you're going to start siding is how, where's level? I mean, how do I establish, you know, the same point all the way around the house? Well, there's a couple ways. Um, you could get a laser or transit out here or some leveling device and plot a point all the way around the home to have one basic uh, starting point that you know is level. I want it to be consistent. I mean, if the home happens to be an inch out of level from one corner to the far corner, I'm not gonna try to fix that with the siding. That would look really weird. Um, and keep in mind, those are the things you see. You know, something out of level with uh, something level on the inside of it, 
you know it looks screwed up. If everything is in the same plane, you don't notice it. Another way would be to, you know, figure that the bottom of your plywood is consistently hanging down the foundation the same amount. Um, that's, that's okay, that would be fine. In which case I would pull up from the bottom of the plywood consistently all the way around the building. Um, what I've ele elected to do for this house, or and that one, is uh, we have the soffits in there, which you have to have before you put the siding up. Um, and it is, um, I'm assuming that it's a, le a level plane up there. So I built myself a story pole. Story pole, it has marks on it indicating where I want the top of each course of siding to go. And I, we actually saved these from the last building since these two are the same. Tim saved them. Uh, good for Tim. And uh, so I don't have to do any thinking. Uh, bless my heart, I don't like to think. So uh, all I have to do is bump it, and I wrote on the top, up. There's an arrow that tells me which side goes up because it makes a difference. So I'm going to go up in the corners, and then I'll come to the side of each window. I'll hold it up. I have a nail I can plink the nail in there. I'll make these crow's feet where I want the siding courses to land. By the way, this is the universal way to mark uh, something. It, it is perfectly clear the point that I am referring to when I make a crow's foot like that. If I were to just make a line like that, um, who knows? Is it this side, that side? Who knows? It, when it comes time to put this siding on, um, we are going to tack the top of the pieces on. We'll put them on the line, tack the top in a position where we know the tack is going to be, you know, a little staple is going to be covered. So I don't care a whole lot about where I do it. Just tack it up above where, you know, above where the next piece is going to cover. So um, we'll finish laying out where the um, courses go on this wall. We'll snap lines on the long runs. And then it's going to come time for me to use my head and think about what size, length of pieces that I need. One thing that drives me nuts is I certainly need to alter where the ends of the boards are, you know, the siding boards. This is a 32 foot run. Obviously it's longer than a piece of siding. I will need to run differing lengths of siding um, on this wall up to, up to these windows and, and have it look appealing. What I do not like, I mean, the easiest thing for me to do would be put the longest piece I could put on there, having it break on a stud, and then drop back 16 inches. 16, 16, 16. And you see that when you look around. That's the lazy way to do it. Certainly the fastest, but it looks dumb having a break, a break, a break, a break, a break. It looks like stairs going down the wall. I like to alter it up. I'll go, I'll go as long as I can, as many as I can. I'll go to the middle, and then I'll um, probably jump back 32 inches, and then I may put a short one, and then a long one, and then a medium one, and then a, then a short one. Just whatever, it's just, it, it's art, really. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm joking a little bit, but you know, I don't want to make, I don't want somebody to look at the wall and see a pattern. I'm going to want the ends of these boards to break on a stud so that, you know, the end joints will both have a nail in them. The corner comes inside of the outside of the building. Anyway, I have to take off a certain amount from, from layout. Instead of coming over here uh, four feet and assuming there's going to be a stud, I'll have to take a little bit off of that for this corner. I want the brakes to land on studs. One little bit of info here. Uh, we're going to get Tim doing something since this is his house. And yes, he does work on it. We'll just, we're going to prove that. Um, okay, so I have you know, my marks going up the corner. And at the other side, the marks went up the corner. Well, I have this window in the way. I need to make, you know, I need a control line from which I can pull to make these marks on both sides of the window. So we had to snap a line from end to end, snap this one, and then I can bring my story pole and line one of my marks up with the line that runs continuous and mark both sides of the window. Okay, so when it comes time to snap these lines on here, uh, remember, we're indicating where the top of the pieces are going to go. So I'll give Tim one end of my chalk box, tap this little sucker as it pulls it out to make sure it gets chalk on it. And Tim will do a, you know, this is a team effort. Uh, I don't want this snapping until it's right where I want it to be snapped. So I'm going to put it on my mark. Tim's good to go. A light snap the first time. 
I can get more than one line out of this chalk block. A little, little more that time, and I can reach one more, and this time I'll snap it. Okay, so I didn't have to reel it up and for each mark, I just lightly, a little harder, a little harder. If you are putting, um, you know, the hardy backer lap siding on here, I would, I would probably come back here and indicate where each one of these studs are. I would put a vertical line so that I know where it is. Um, that type of siding, you have to blind nail it, which means you're nailing it where the next piece is going to cover it. There are no exposed nails with hardy backer or even LP siding. So I would want to make sure that I'm nailing it in, into a stud. This is a little bit different. We're going to tack it up and then we're going to face nail it. And once we put one or two courses on, I will put a mark where um, layout is, where one right there. I will indicate that on the face of the piece of siding where it will not get covered. And that will get me started later on when I want to measure across there and mark where the studs are. So it's important to have a starter strip across the bottom so that the amount that it tilts in mimics the rest of the piece. When we come put this next piece up, it will be leaning out just the same amount as the next one above. And if we didn't, it would look a little funny. I held these down flush with the bottom of the plywood of the wall, and then the siding is gonna hang down another, I don't know, 3 eighths of an inch or so beyond that. So I've got a variety of lengths here. I'm gonna start out with the longest. This one back here. Flip it over. We're, we happen to be putting this smooth side out. So I'm, I'm tied into the corner right now, and I'm gonna pull it away from the corner, just a whisker. And I'm just nailing the top. Remember, this is where it's going to be covered. And you wanna stay on the, on the line. There. Like it? Yeah. Next, I'm altering the pin, pin joint down there. I'll come with one that's, I don't know, 30 feet shorter or so. Again, I'm tight into the corner, and I'm pulling it out just a little bit for some expansion and caulking and whatnot. You gotta go down a little bit. You wanna be on the line where I'm at, not where you're at. Okay. Come on down. Okay. Work your way up. Let me show you what happens at the joints here. We've got these plastic, these go in between the pieces. What this does is help assure that these joints don't leak. So I'm going to come in here, keep it just up from the bottom, and shove it back behind that sheet. I'm going to do it over here too. You learn things in this life. Um, over there, we put this siding on in, in the winter, it was wet. We provided a little bit of gap in between the, the pieces, uh, but it wasn't enough. We should have gapped it more. It's impressive, when this stuff gets wet or damp, it gets longer, it expands. When it expands, if it doesn't have a gap to, to consume, then it wants off of the wall. What happens is it bows. It creates a big old bow where it's not tight to the wall. So. Especially with Hardy Backer or some of these other sightings, you have to leave. You know, you think an eight, eighth inch would be enough? It's really not. You need to be a little bit more than that. The trick is to put caulking in between those two and allow that to fill the void. So the caulking can compress and expand and move with the sighting. One thing I've done, if I were here by myself, um, I could come and put a nail. And that gives me something that I'll hold my tape measure and I can go measure these pieces out to the corner. So I'm 93 and 3 quarter. I'm not going to want it 93 and 3 quarter. That would be tight. I'm probably going to take a quarter inch off of that. But
Anyway, a couple notes about this siding. So this is the, um, it's half by seven actually, uh, cedar bevel. It actually is finger jointed. Um, this home is in the historical district. It's required to have wood siding. It's the one of the silliest things I've ever heard of because hardy plank or you know siding would would look it would look the same, and it would last forever. Uh, anyway, they don't ask me my opinion, but anyway, uh, it's got a textured side and then a smooth side. Um, we elected on the last one to go smooth side. I just think the paint paint covers it better. It's got a longer, a better chance of lasting longer. Uh, anyway. So I pay attention to that when I'm handling this material. It's my job to shuffle these around, cut them, and whatnot. So I always shuffle them around on the rough side. This stuff is really frail. If I if I dig in there and make a mark with my pencil, sure, it'll get painted. You will see the dent in the board from me making the mark. Keep that stuff in mind. I'm checking it for um, defects. If there's a bad spot in a board, I don't send it out to get put on the house. I cut it out get rid of it, use it, you know, at least somewhere where nobody's going to care. This is all pre-primed. It's fantastic. But the ends are not perfect. If the edge isn't square, which most of the time these are not particularly square, I don't like that. I like it to look nice and uniform. So I end up cutting the end with the saw. It's probably the wrong thing to do, but at least I start up with a nice end. So I am having to cut both ends of this material. You know, if it were hardy plank or some other manufactured siding, you wouldn't have to do that. This is where problems occur. You know, this is the one window on the building that will be exposed to the weather. It's the only one I'm worried about uh, doing a good job of flashing. In fact, we didn't even flash the other ones. Uh, I'm just, they're just so far from the weather that it will never happen. So now, uh, that's a little added protection. At least the water, so the water's, you know, for the most part, going to come off of the front. Some of it will come around the corner. I've got the plastic behind here. Um, and, you know, then it will rely on the caulking. If it gets past the caulking, that is what the, you know, part of what the house wrap is all about. And it's always a surprise when you tear something apart and say, boy, uh, this X, Y, or Z has been leaking for a long time. Oh. And whether I do this or not, uh, I'll probably be long gone. Uh, I'll change my phone number. Tim won't even know how to get a hold of me. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it won't matter so much. Another thing I like to do with this flashing, it comes basically bent at a 90 degree angle. I like to put a little extra angle on there to assure that it has slope. I'm going to go ahead and just bend it by hand a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, all the way down. <clears throat> so when I put it up in position, I will leave it with that little bit of angle. I will not try to get it tight into the corner. And I'll you know, attack this top right here. So now I know most of the water, when it hits that flashing, is headed out. We, we got all the siding completed a while ago. And this has been on my list of things to do, come back and face nail all this siding. Um, what that means is that uh, a lot of the products to that you buy today, the idea is that the, you do not see any nails on the surface of the siding. There's benefits to that. Uh, one, you don't have to see the nail. And two, there's no nail hole for weather to get in. Um, if you can imagine, you know, water running down the side of the house, each time you puncture the siding with a nail, you've created a spot where water, moisture, can get in there and deteriorate the material. This is cedar siding. I'm not, I'm not um, satisfied that the nails on, on top are enough. It needs to be face nailed, uh, which means you will see the nail. I want the nails to be in line and look real pretty and uh, straight because you will see them forever and ever and ever. I'm going to use a level. I'm going to find layout wherever there's a break in the siding. Those break on a stud and I'm actually going to put it off of the splice probably an inch or so. And then I will make my level plumb right like that 
and I put my nails an inch away from the level. I'm not going to put a line on the siding. It takes a little effort for me to hold this level and make sure it doesn't move and then hold the gun and nail up the siding. And I'm going to nail probably, I don't know, three quarters of an inch up or so all the way up. And I'm going to be fussy about how I nail them. I do not want the gun blowing those through the siding. If anything, they will fall short of the siding and Tim will come back behind me and tap them so they're nice and flush with the surface. It's about the best we can do uh, and then the paint will help seal those up.